Today we're going to be reviewing the 1981 sci-fi film Outland, starring Sean Connery and written and directed by Peter Hyams. This is the second Peter Hyams film from around that era that I've reviewed. Three years later, Hyams would write and direct the film adaptation of Arthur C. Clarke's 2010 Odyssey 2. The film would be called 2010 The Year We Make Contact, a film I really like. Outland has a similar visual style to 2010, very much a similar gritty 80s sci-fi aesthetic that can be seen in some of the visual effects and sets of the film. The story is set aboard a titanium mining outpost on one of Jupiter's moons, Io. The Con Am 27 facility is home to 2,144 people, most of whom are labourers. The living conditions on the station are bleak, rough and ready. Creature comforts are few and far between. This is a fairly undesirable place to be, filled with a seedy underworld element, workers with criminal records, corrupt police officers and exploitative and greedy general managers like Mark Shepard, played by Peter Boyle. The film has a raw quality to it, occasionally graphic and disturbing in places, but these elements do sell the dangers associated with living on a space colony and the negative psychological effects of such a bleak life on the perilous new frontier of space. Indeed, Hyams wanted to make a western in space, and the film seems to have some thematic similarities to the 1952 western classic High Noon, starring Gary Cooper. This time, the mining facility on Io serves as a kind of lawless western town where the order of civilization hasn't yet reached, and nor have many of the creature comforts, like I say. Sean Connery plays a federal marshal by the name of William O'Neill. He's basically the new sheriff in town on a short tour of duty there. He's arrived with his wife and son, but she is very unhappy with the quality of life on the outpost, and it's not long before she takes off with the boy and leaves. She wants to go back to Earth and for her child to not be exposed to such a dreary, unnatural environment. He's never been to Earth before and dreams of living there. Sean Connery is truly brilliant, as always playing a tough-as-nails, uncompromising alpha male and an idealist, unwilling to compromise on his principles or look the other way when he sees corruption. Now, the film doesn't have any aliens or supernatural or paranormal elements or fantastical future technologies. The science fiction is very much realistic and grounded within conventional scientific understanding of space travel. In fact, the basic plot about a sheriff coming to town and standing his ground and standing up to corruption, it doesn't need a space sci-fi setting at all. It is, ultimately, a cowboy western set in space, but it could have been set almost anywhere in the past, present or future. O'Neill, the main character, investigates a series of strange deaths on the station where workers in the mine basically lose their minds following sudden major psychotic episodes and kill themselves in fairly gruesome ways, like for example walking out an airlock and suffering head-exploding decompression. He begins investigating further and finds that there's a drug ring operating on the station. With the help of Dr. Lazarus, played by Francis Sternhagen, he discovers that some of the miners are using a drug called polydichloric euthamol, an amphetamine that drastically improves worker performance. They get 14 hours of work done in 6 hours, but after 10 or 11 months, psychotic breaks can happen. The drug ring is being run by the general manager of the mine, Mark Shepard. O'Neill had a fight with one of his flunkies, Spota, before capturing him and interrogating him in a zero-g holding cell. Shepard tries to offer O'Neill a cut of the profits if he'll look the other way, but O'Neill is having none of it. Later, he finds Spota murdered in his holding cell, and his corrupt partner is also dead in his room. After squaring up to Shepard one last time, it's clear O'Neill's life is in danger. He intercepts a communication between Shepard and one of his contacts, where Shepard orders some hitmen to arrive on the next transport to kill O'Neill. The rest of the film is about O'Neill ambushing the hitmen one by one with the help of Dr. Lazarus. O'Neill eventually heads back on the next flight to be with his wife and son, and then they'll go back to Earth. 
Though it's not clear to what degree Shepard faced justice for what he did, Lazarus remarks at the end about O'Neill doing good and also that things are about to hit the fan around here suggests that Shepard will be prosecuted. The film ends in a rather unsatisfying and abrupt way, almost like the end of a 1980s video game, with a text message being typed by O'Neill coming up on the screen. It's a rather lacklustre conclusion. Outland is a very simple film, perhaps a little too simple. The story is, as I described, it's basically a new sheriff coming to town and refusing to go along with the institutional corruption that's been going on there for a while. A man who refuses to look the other way and instead maintains his moral code and the courage of his convictions, regardless of how far away he is from the backup of civilization and law and order, and regardless as to the dangers to himself. He's a true hero in every sense of the word. Certainly, Sean Connery is the highlight of the movie, and without him, I think this film would have struggled and probably have been forgotten. His performance and presence raises the film a few gears. But ultimately, there's only so much a great actor like Sean Connery can do with a script this average. The film doesn't really offer a particularly exciting or interesting plot. It's a basic enough drug-bust cop story with Western themes set in outer space, but I don't know if there's enough of the sci-fi elements to satisfy the sci-fi fans and I'm not sure there's enough depth or intrigue in the story to satisfy people who like a good crime thriller. There's action, violence, some of it a bit too graphic to be honest, and there's a very good musical score by the always fantastic Jerry Goldsmith. But as an overall product, Outland just feels a bit lacking and unimaginative in my view. <laughs> 